In this video, I'm going to show you how you can save the output from your web scrapers to a database using Python. We're going to be using SQLite 3, which is in the Python standard library, so you don't need to install anything else, and it's super simple. So let's get straight in. The first thing you want to do is import it. So it's import SQLite 3 with one L. The next thing you want to do is you want to either connect to or create a database. So it's the same command. If there's no database exists with the name that you give it, it will create it. If it exists, it will connect to it. So it's C-O-N for connection is equal to SQLite 3 dot connect and then the name of your database. So I'm going to call this one uh, lunch.db for lack of anything more creative. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create a cursor object that lets us interact with the database using SQL commands. So it's a SQL database. So we want to do C is equal to con.cursor. This will let us use the C command to um, access our database and make changes to it or add things to it. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to just run that. See, we've got no output, but no errors. If I come over to the Explorer, we can see right here, there is a database called lunch.db. Ignore the other stuff in there. That's failed attempts. Um, so <laughs> the next thing that we want to do is we need to create a table in our database. So that's done with a single command. There's a few different ways you can do it. I'm going to do it in the main script and I'm going to comment it out once we've created it. If you leave it in there and try and create the same table over and over again, you'll get an error. There's a couple of things we need to know about our table before we get going is we need to create the columns that we want and the data type that we're going to be putting into those columns. I'm going to stick to a simple three column database for now for this example. And when I move on to the uh, actual work, more working example, you'll see it going through there. So I'm going to create my table with c.execute. c.execute lets us execute commands on our database. We're going to do three apostrophes and then we do create table. Now all SQL commands are in capitals and now we need to name our table. So I'm just going to call this one uh, meals and open up another set of brackets. Now this is where we're going to define our columns and our data type. So our, my first column is going to be sandwich and this is going to be a text column. Then a comma and then the next one we're going to do is fruit because we are healthy. And again, I'm going to do text and then I'm going to do table number and I'm going to make this an integer. And then we close this off with our apostrophes again. And now I'm going to save and run that. I got an error because I have a extra bracket in there, which I do not want. So we run that. I've got no problems. So if I was to run this again, you'll see the error I get is this time is table already exists. So we're going to comment that out. So now I need to get some data to store into our database. So I'm just going to quickly type up uh, sandwich and this can be whatever you want is equal to ham. Why not fruit? What's everyone's favorite fruit? Yeah, it's an apple definitely. And then table number uh, can be let's go for 21. Why not? So you notice that these two are text fields and this is an integer because that is what we defined in our table when we created it. Sandwich was text, text, int, text, text, and integer. So to insert this into our database, we again use c.execute, three apostrophes, and then we do insert into. And now we do the table name, which we would call meals, and then we do values. Um, so this is basically telling telling the code we're going to insert into this table with these with these values, and then we open up our brackets. And I'm going to use placeholders for this. So we do uh, we've got three values. So I'm going to do three question marks. Now we can close that off, and this is where we want to put in the information that we've saved that we want to insert into our database. Um, I did this in variables because it's, it's kind of easier to understand because it's more likely that any data you want to put into your database is going to be in a variable like this. So if I save this and run it, you would have thought that this would be inserted into our database. Well, this is just to actually make it stay in there. We have to commit it to the database. So if you think about you do a load of inserts, they're ready to go in and then you commit them. So you do con.commit. 
You can do multiple inserts with a single commit if you wanted to. In fact, that's better if you're inserting a lot of data in from various places or whatever. If you do all your inserts first and, you, and then you commit them at the end, otherwise it saves you all the extra time of uh, doing multiple commits to your database. So I'm gonna run this and we're gonna commit this data in. Uh, let's run it once for now. I'm going to comment these two lines out now. Um, so now we've put that data in, if we want to get it back out, we want to select it from the database and we want to display it back to us. So to do that, we use our c.execute again, because we're doing commands on our database. And then we do select, the star means everything. So we're basically getting everything from this table from. So now we've selected it, much like when we insert, we have to commit. Now we've selected it, we have to fetch it. So we do c.fetchAll. Uh, and we'll do, we'll actually save that as results is equal to, and we'll print out the results. So if I've done everything right down here, we should have one result of ham, apple, and a table number. And we can see that this is an integer and these two are text fields. So I'm gonna uncomment this and we'll add another bit of data and we'll go cheese, banana, and they can sit on the same table number. Now if we run that, we can see that's inserted and we'll do a couple more. Let's do jam. When did you have a jam sandwich last? Uh, orange, and this guy can sit on table 22. Put that in there, you can see that's coming up here. And we'll do one more, or um, I'm running out of what you have in a sandwich. Uh, chicken, why not? Uh, this guy can also have an orange and also sit on table 22. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four entries into our database. So I'll comment this out now and save that. And we'll run it and we'll see that we have the entries here. So we could, um, you can do anything you like. You could select, you could index or whatever or um, anything because this is just a list. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually gonna show you how you can select different data. So I'm going to select, instead of star for everything, I'm actually gonna only select the records um, that are the fruit part from it. So this is just gonna tell us the fruit that came through. And we could do the same with the table number, table num, I think I called it, table number. And we can see that we have them there. So that's a nice easy way to uh, create, the, create the database, create a table, connect to it, uh, insert, then commit data. And I've showed you how to select and fetch and then display. Uh, the, only, the other thing that is quite useful, especially when you're testing, is to delete a table from your database. So to do that, I'll do that up here. You do c.execute and three apostrophes and it is drop table, I believe, and then the table name meals. So this is basically going to drop everything. It's gonna delete the whole table. So if I run it again, we're gonna get no results. I did call it meals because I'm trying to select from a table that does not exist. So you can't do that. Uh, and again, if I comment that out, put this one back in to create the table again, and we put these two back in to commit, we're gonna run this and we're just having one entry back. So that's basically it. I wanna show you how I would do that in my web scraper now, but these are the core commands that you're gonna to need to put put data into a database and save it and then retrieve it. So now I'll show you a uh, more real world sort of working example. I've got here a simple web scraping script. I'm just gonna make this one smaller so we can see everything a bit easier on the screen. And we're using Request and Beautiful Soup and we are going out to this URL that we've given down here and we're bringing back some information. Now this specific information I've got, I'm getting the time, so I'm importing date time we're getting the time, I'm storing a the store code and we're getting the title, the price and the stock status of the item on this page. So if I run this, you'll see what the output is. You can see here, it's all just printed in a line. We have the date time, which is the date and the time right down. This was the store code that I put in. The product was this AMD processor and the price, 475. And this is the stock status. Um, this is a long text string at the moment, which is not ideal, but hey, hey, that'll do. So if I wanted to save all of this information to a database, 
so we could store it and we could maybe analyze it later. You could run this automatically every hour to find price information. To do that, I'm going to do exactly what I did before. We're going to import SQLite 3. Let's close that. And I'm going to do con for connection is equal to SQLite3.connect. And let's call this uh, CPU test.db. And then I'm going to do C is equal to con.cursor. So we have something we can interact with the database. Now I'm going to create the table. So we would do again c.execute. And we do create table. And I'm going to call this one uh, uh, price, price, prices. Prices will do. Now I've showed you this, or I've showed you this. We have the date first. So I want to do date, which is a date object. We can do that in the database, which is really cool. Then I'm going to do store, which was a text field, title, which is also text. Um, let's move this onto another line so we can see. And then I'm going to, what was the next one? Uh, price, excuse me, was, I'm going to do real, which is uh, like a float, which is a decimal point number. Um, and the last one was stock, and that was also text. So we've got date, store, title, price, stock. Date, store, title, price, stock, there we go. So we've got all the information there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna comment out this so it doesn't actually run that. Let's shrink that down, we don't need that for the moment. I'm gonna run this, get no errors. So hopefully we've created our table, run it again. Yep, table already exists. So we can comment this line out. Uh, but because I'm happy with it like that, I'm actually just going to go ahead and remove it. So what we need to do is we need to take the function that we've written, and at the moment it just prints this information out, but we want to insert it into our database instead. So I'm just going to leave that there now, and I'm going to do uh, c.execute and insert into and our table was called prices and then the values values and we've got uh, date store title price and stop we've got five so we need to do five two three four five one two three four five and then close that off and then in here we're going to do this now this is in has to be in the right order so it has to be in the order that we put the we created our table which this fortunately is so i don't have to type it out again Let's remove our print statement for now. I'll just comment it out. So what we've done so far is we've created our connection. We've created our database and created a connection. We have our cursor objects and here we are executing and inserting these values into the database. So outside of the function, because we might want to run multiple functions, and I'll show you that in a second, we want to do con.commit. Now that's going to commit that information into the database. So I'm going to just do a quick print statement after this, um, just so I know that it's complete, it's a bit tidier. Uh, we'll run that, no errors and complete. So to check that back, I get, uh, we do c.execute, select three apostrophes, select star from prices, and like we did before, where we insert and then commit. When we select, we need to fetch. So c.fetch all. And I'm going to say again results because why change? And then print our results. And there's one thing I missed on my last explanation. It's always, always good to close your connection. Con.close after you are done. So I'm going to run this again. And we can see that we have uh, two entries here. This is our first one where we have the date, uh, store, the name, the price, and the stock variable there. So I'm going to run that again. We can see we're just adding to it. Uh, instead of filling that up with text, I will print the length of the results because we can see that that is working. Run that again, and we go five, six, and so on. So every time it goes through this function and gets the data, we insert it into the database and then we commit it. And then we select it back because we wanted to see it. Again, we could select just the 
uh, I call it price and then print the actual results so these should be all of the prices that we've inserted they're probably all the same because I've just done it all together yep all the same but we could then see we could just pull out the prices for analysis or whatever so this is a nice and nice and easy example of one here's one more that I did uh, earlier which basically is the same but the price is the same product but it's from three different stores I'm going to just make this a bit smaller again just so for the example so we've got three different stores where we select the same product um, and again I've got the execute insert values the same information I have print C dot last row ID which is what I was using for testing which you can do which is quite handy um, and then I put them all in a try and accept because I was having some problems um, running them if you've done your if you've done your web scraping properly you probably won't need those we commit it and down here I have a final command that I was using so this is taking the data from the database and displaying it in a pandas data frame and we're basically doing the same select from and our connection and we're just reading it in with read sql query into df so if i run this now we will see it's going to run through our functions and we can see that we actually have a nice data frame back that shows us some of the prices and you can actually see here i know the data has been cut off a bit but the prices have changed so this one was yesterday i ran this yet yeah, the seventh uh, at nine o'clock ish so we can see that ccl was 431.92 whereas today it's 455.62 what you could do is you could set this up to run every day or every 12 hours or so or even as often as you like and you could save all that data into a database so i'm going to have coming up i'm going to have a new project where we're going to take this we're going to set we're going to scrape every uh, on an interval of I think I'll probably do it reasonably long um, just for the sake of it for this example but maybe we'll do it every 12 hours or so and I'm going to take that data we're going to open it up in a flask app and we're going to create our own price tracker app that's going to come in the future you'll see you guys will see that pop up and uh, if you stuck around this far you'll know about it in advance if you have anyway so that's going to do it for this video it's turned out a bit longer than I'd hoped uh, hopefully it showed you that adding your scraped info to a database is nice and easy and is accessible and you should definitely start doing it because databases obviously are the way forward because everyone uses them um, sql is not hard to learn these are really basic commands there's so many more than this and this so it obviously expands out but hopefully this you found this uh, useful so thanks for sticking around watching this video guys and i will see you next time thank you bye